In this video, we're going to implement a 301 redirect. But first, we're going to check five things first. Here are the two pages that we're going to be talking about. A couple of years ago, well, a few years ago now, I wrote a blog on the root and branch site about button click tracking, how to set that up in Google Tag Manager. And this blog won't make you scroll all the way through it now, but it was how to do that with universal analytics. And universal analytics is quickly becoming a thing of the past. Recently wrote a new blog, same process, but for the new platform, Google Analytics 4. So for our redirect here, we're going to be looking at how can we redirect this old blog to destination of the new blog. When we're all done, here's what's going to happen. Here's that old URL. And after we've implemented the redirect, if we try to go to that page, it's going to redirect and take us to the new page. Let's walk through now the five steps that we did first to make sure this was a good idea and then how we actually did it. First, let's do a quick primer on redirects and 301s in particular. A redirect happened when someone asks for a specific page, a specific URL, and they get sent to a different page instead. A 301 redirect is a special kind of redirect where it is a permanent one. That means the new page has permanently replaced the old URL. So there's the old URL, URL1, 301 goes into place, and 301 means URL1 is no longer, it is no more. Everything has been transferred to the new URL at URL2. Here's some situations where 301s may make sense. If you're changing your URL structure, if you're getting rid of outdated content and you need to delete something, or if you're consolidating multiple overlapping pieces of content to a single piece. We're kind of two and three here. In addition to humans, search engine spiders are also redirected. So they transfer everything they knew about the old URL to the new URL. That includes links. So if the old URL had backlinks, that value, that link equity, will get passed along to the new URL with the 301 redirect. Critical distinction from a 302 redirect, which is a temporary, non-permanent redirect, where that link equity will not be passed. So the five things to do first before we implement our 301 redirect. First thing, make sure you can articulate why you're making this permanent decision, because it's permanent. We don't want to just go in there willy-nilly and then decide in a week or two, oh, you know what, actually, I didn't really want to make that decision. So in this case, the piece of content that is getting redirected that content is never going to be coming back and be relevant again. Universal analytics is no longer going to be something that people really care about. So if we can take some of the value that had been there and pass it to the new page, focusing on the new Google Analytics, Google Analytics 4, that's good today, that's good next year, that's good in five or 10 years until Google changes Google Analytics again. So number one, check. Number two, check the SEO ranking status of the pages involved in the redirect. We can check this ranking status in a couple of different ways. So for this blog, I wanna know what's it doing right now? Is it ranking? What keywords is it ranking for? How much traffic is it driving? So we can grab this URL here and move over to Google Search Console, which I've done. Now pull, put in this exact URL. Now we can see what's happening with that page. We can see not a ton of traffic, four total clicks, only 370 impressions. Um, you know, it first indexed only a couple weeks ago. So it's new and hopefully growing. But if we're able to put a redirect in place from a page that had some link juice before, it could help give this another boost. And let's just toggle over here to search queries, turn on average position. We can see what search queries are actually ranking. Now let's check this page. This old page, this has been around, it was published, well this date here is February 15th of 2020. If we grab that URL, let's put that in to Search Console here. We'll change the date range. This, we'll just go the last 16 months And we can see if we toggle to just only look at impressions that this has been on the long steady decline for a while. It's still much more meaningful in terms of traffic than the other page, 811 clicks over that period. But we can see 
the shape of the curve, it's going down to zero. Based on this, we might surmise that this page has some backlinks pointing to it that would be valuable if we can get them pointed to the new page. How can we confirm that though? One place we can check, we can actually do it in Search Console. If we scroll down to Links, we can see top linked pages here from external links. Now, let's see, if we click into more, let's see if we get this button click tracking page. There it is. We can see Google has recognized there's four backlinks from four distinct domains. If we click into that, we can see what those backlinks are. So that, that link value there that Google's already recognized will be passed to the new blog. You can also do this if you have the Chrome browser extension for Moz. This is a, a free browser extension. I think it's pretty nice. And just by activating it, we can see that this particular page has a page authority of 28 with eight links from eight different root domains. And if you have a Moz account, you can click into that and see what those links are. So it looks like Moz is picking up eight. Google is saying, hey, we really only care about these four that we're showing you in Search Console. But regardless, there are, there's link equity here that we're gonna be able to pass to this page. When we compare that to the backlink status of the new page, we can see there are zero links right here, zero links from zero root domains. So our hypothesis is this 301 redirect should help the SEO ranking potential of this page. It should obviously also help just user experience for people because they're not gonna really care about the old page, uh, but hopefully also there's the SEO benefit for us as well. The third thing, let's check the indexation status in Search Console. We just wanna make sure that the page we're redirecting, Google feels good about it in this exact moment. We don't want to redirect a page that Google is maybe has questions about. We'd wanna fix that first. To do that, we're gonna go back to Search Console. Let's grab our URL and we can inspect it with this bar at the top of the page. And then Google's gonna show us what's going on in its index. These happy green check marks, this is great news. The page is indexed. Google doesn't seem to have any issues with it. Google sees multiple referring pages, which we've already seen here. Um, some of these, we might actually want to manually change our internal links to point them to the new page instead of the old one. In the meantime, though, the 301 redirect is going to take care of all those things for us. The fourth thing that we want to do is we want to mine any valuable SEO insights from the page that is about to be redirected. This page is going to go away. Are there any nuggets of good SEO opportunity that we can use to perhaps help plan future blog posts? Let's go back to Search Console. All right, now we're looking at that specific page, the old page that's about to be redirected, and Google's going to give us search query information down here. So let's turn on average position and let's look. Button click tracking Google Tag Manager. So this is a keyword that's still going to apply just as well on the new page. Hmm, this is interesting though. How to track a WhatsApp button click with Google Tag Manager. That's not something that's specifically mentioned in this blog, this new one. So if we want some of that value to pass, we're probably either going to want to add an H2 section on the new on the new blog to maybe target that keyword, or we could even consider that as a future standalone blog post. Now the last step is just to make sure we know how to implement the redirect using our CMS or host. Root and Branch Group is a WordPress website, uses WP Engine for the host. All redirects are now implemented through WP Engine. So depending on how your site is set up, it might be totally separate. You could be a WordPress site that uses a redirection plugin. You could use perhaps the premium version of Yoast to do it. If you have a Squarespace site or a Shopify site or a Magento site, all very different. So we're gonna go through the process here of implementing this in WP Engine, but whatever your specific setup is, make sure you know the latest and greatest information about how specifically to implement it before you go ahead and do it. Within WP Engine, we can see redirect rules right here. Let's click into that. You can see there's only one rule in place right now. We're going to hit this purple button to add a new redirect rule. We'll give it a name. Sure. UA button click 
to GA4 button click. The source, this is where we put in the page that is going to be redirected, the old page. And the destination will be the new page. Let's grab the page path here from the source and the place where we're sending it to is the destination. Now one thing to check, now these trailing slashes can be tricky. Um, I've seen on some sites where actually there are multiple versions of pages that are indexed, ones with the trailing slash, one without. In Google's mind, those are two totally different pages. So I've already checked in Search Console and Google only has the version with the trailing slash indexed. Same for all of the blog pages on the site, but you might wanna check that as well. If you're in a situation where maybe you have multiple pages indexed, here WP Engine is showing us some common regular expressions for redirect rules and the question mark says the character before this is optional. So this would basically cover a redirect from this page without the trailing slash and one with the trailing slash. I'm also going to add this caret here for the source. Um, and then I'm going to hit save. All right, that's the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, feel free to come back. There's typically a new video every week or two about Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, SEO. Have a great day.